All right, everybody, thanks for sticking around. We're heading right into this series, and even just looking at the map and mode combinations, the team names already had us excited to get in on the action. It's native versus native, red versus white. It's so hard to pick a team here. Native red had that heartbreaking story at Charlotte, and native white had the rise up from behind that top four finish. When Mikowski gets back, I gotta give him full credit because he was the one of the first people I heard to predict Native White on that top four at Charlotte. That did come through. Another historic game considering this international roster, including barcode from AMZ, tapping buttons from Mexico, and forming as a strong squad. Early on in this game, it's very dicey. Back and forth, the fight is on B. Pollock wins it out. Three kills and three assists already to his name alongside that crucial capture to give Native Red a little bit of map control. Pollock's gonna try to hold on to this B-side spawn, playing the solo defense, but it looks like Barcode is the one to get the breaking kill. Two go down for Native Red. This push from Native White is gonna come through. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of where. And as they take down Druck, Manny both hitting the respawn screen, Native White are finding some momentum, and they have not just one zone, not just two, potentially a triple cap. They flip B if they can get that reset on A. They're already getting the double points, so that early lead from Native Red has been obliterated. Great response from Native Red to find the first objective. They had to get, no, 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 I'm wrong, I am wrong. I thought that capture was all but secured, but it's Gilkey and the rest of Native White breaking up that push for A. And look at look at what Native Red have to do. They have to flip to the complete opposite side of the map to try to find any footy. Manny's double kill is gonna help. He secures the rockets looking for the triple. Watch out, that almost hit the teammate running across the screen. He does get that takedown. The push to B is underway, but the score already doubled up here for Native White off of the back of that triple capture. Manny last alive for Native Red is left scrambling. Mickwin with the double kill, and here come Native White yet again. On board now with Druck. Native White looking hungry for these captures. We talked so much in the last series about getting slays that led to objective control. And I tell you what, Native White are doing just that. Every time you see players from Native Red going down, it's almost a sure thing. It's almost a signed contract that Native White are gonna come out with a capture on the zone. Gilkey in that dangerous position. We saw Spartan here on the rampage with the red gun at the top of Seabell. And now that position being locked down by Gilkey, making any map rotations uh, very difficult for Native Red. Almost like a scouting type of location on the map with overview of every route. He's gonna see that the push is coming to B-side, trying to deal out some initial damage. And he finds a takedown on Druck. There's still three players from Native Red and they're two locking down B, the third player sneaking around. It's Manny and us. Unfortunately, Gilkey was so ready. He had his scope locked onto that corner, ready for that rotation. Manny almost didn't even know what hit him. The red gun nearly out of ammo though, in the hands of Gilkey. Eight and three is his stat line. Tapping buttons on the other side, gets the triple. Had his eyes on the overkill, but not enough health. Of course, shout out to Nighty. Of course he catches the triple kill. The overkill potential was right there. Native White fighting again for B. Gilkey has to step off. He's had kill after kill. He's out of the red gun ammo. He's gonna have to settle for a trade of kills. Native White here jumping out on top of Native Red, up by a margin of nearly 100 as Native Red gets the well-timed capture on A and B to flip the scoring back in their favor. Druck with the Rockets to work with, not only the Rockets, but a full set. Barcode with a slay across map on Talik that might divert Druck's attention away as it does. Takes down tapping buttons as a result. Two down for each side here. This capture on C is going to be very crucial here for Native Red as McWin goes down. It looks like C will as well, but A flipping on the other side as Native Red will once again secure the scoring with B and C. Yeah, but so far the scoring of this game has been uh, pivoting on that B side capture. A and C can trade all day, but until you have those B side spawns and that B uh, capture zone control, that's who is getting points up on the board. And right now that's Native Red and they need it. They're on the comeback as Native White are already past the halfway mark. Barcode looking to add another kill to his name. It's a fight against Manny. And this time Manny's gonna win it out. Barcode did enough damage, however, to set up a clean takedown 
down for tapping buttons. Tapping buttons in trouble. Can he set up teammate Gilkey to clean up the rest of that kill? He's gonna try to stay alive, but they don't have a lot of time before needing to hop back on that objective because it's currently a triple cap for Native Red. Oh, but Native White splitting B and C, potentially scoring both here. Doubling down, but they only get B here. The scoring is gonna continue for Native Red, but there's three down. Tallik, the only player alive. And he's not close. Oh, he is close enough on C to contest, but not enough with the Stalker shots. Huge. So now, Native White not only going to grab C, but they're going to grab that Stalker as well. But no, those are the final shots that rang out. 60 seconds until that Stalker is back up. What, what's the person in sports called in football that's like uh, up in the booth, but giving signals to like the coach? What's that job? Offensive coordinator, maybe a defensive yeah, coordinator. Yeah, no, that's it. I think that's Gilkey's role, right? He's been hanging out top of C, balcony, and just kind of having yeah. oversight of the whole map and like giving <laughs> yeah. cues to the rest of the teammate. Like, it's not quite the quarterback or coach's position, but he's basically channeling the rest of his teammates, giving them the call outs. And so far, Gilkey in that role has been leading Native White to this early lead. They're still climbing, but they're at risk of a triple cap as Gilkey, oh no, he's shot out of the skybox. He's hitting the respawn screen instead yeah that's a great point you bring up magic starting to show a big reason why mcwin went out and chose the veteran gilkey as the fourth for this roster i believe so in moments like this where maybe mcwin not having as great of a slaying performance game or really on his igl or call out you know you can rely on gilkey to make the appropriate call to predict the correct spawn as we're seeing a little bit of that here as this one's now deadlock tied two a and b swinging oh, no. into native white's favor this one's getting mixy going to the 200s no b did not get flipped though it was stopped at like 97 percent captured so all native red had to do is set one little pinky toe onto the objective to get that full reset and now native red are taking back the lead stronghold is so back and forth you never can catch your breath in a game mode like stronghold things can change in the blink of an eye and that's what's happening right now as native red are first to hit that red zone that 200 point mark native white are less scrambling and they lost that subway hold that they were really building their offense off of Native White was at one point up about 80, 90 seconds or so. Now they're going to need 80 to 90 seconds to come back in this game as Native Red have not stopped the scoring. 225 and rolling. Manny looking to lock down this B location, and this task is going to be a lot easier because Native Red has numbers. Two of Native White just now spawning on that PD side. Native Red knows the push is going to come from either the cafe or PD side. Manny with the cross shot and the Sentinel Beam to potentially get some damaging help here. Yeah. But he spots the back of tapping buttons. Great positioning here. Doesn't have the great shots, but Magic, when you have that level of positioning and decision making, it doesn't matter how you're shooting. You're going to win that. Hold up. Let him cook. Sentinel Beam is microwaving the final kill that they needed for the comeback. Native White started out so strong. Gilgi giving the cues, dealing the damage with the Stalker Rifle. But as soon as that Seaside was taken over, Native Red came back in true form. They make a nice comeback game in a, in a series that's hard to pick a side. Both are part of Native Gaming, Red versus White. And in game number one, at least, Native Red showing that they are up to the challenge. Yeah, we had the classic machinima in the old Halo days of Red versus Blue, but today it's the Native White versus Native Red matchup that everybody's talking about. And the regain there, again, from Native Red, and it goes to show why these games don't start in the 200s. That map was a perfect <laughs> example magic because it looked like Native White was in full control. Yeah, Native White, first half of the game, you'd be like, oh, wow, they got this locked and down. Some great adjustments mid-game from the side of Native Red. No surprise when you're looking at this roster of Tallik, Soul Snipe, Druck, Manny. I mean, I very literally said to Tallik one time, I promise to never underestimate you again because you never know what Tallik is going to do in a given day and in a given match. And even though maybe his stat line isn't showy, it's very even. Kills, assists, and deaths. He's participating in every area across the board. I just wish wish that the overlay showed us captures as well on that objective line but uh you know maybe that's a discussion for another day yeah that would be wonderful to see but nonetheless we have these stats to go off and most of them leaning in native red's favor so it's not as if native red Tied played for most captures i'll take it oh there we go okay so we do have in the post game report so yeah the efficiency tied in captures but the time 80 80 second difference a full minute and a half almost 
for native red so again it's almost like in that instance maybe the object the efficiency within the objective <laughs> efficiency for native red it's there and it's why they have a one lead and Talib with the most objective time 58 seconds nearly a full minute so I, I love i love it when the stats do kind of tell the story kind of fill in the blanks uh, of, of Talib being that all-around player on the side of native red and a big key to why they were able to come back in that game tapping buttons however with most damage across the board i know those damage stats are fun to look at and unfortunately he was the last takedown that native red needed in order to secure the game one win but tell you what i'm so happy this isn't like a best of three you know i would go to a best of seven maybe a best of 117 i don't know these two teams watching them go head to head is certainly a lot of fun and i, I have no doubt that the series is going to go the distance it's not even a matter of if native white are going to get back in the series it's just how they are going to do that well and the irony here is that this native white versus native red matchup this is something you'd see on lvt money tuesdays as a as a show match but here today, we get to witness it with tournament consequences, with HCS points on the line. Almost double the amount of points you can earn in these open series this year compared to last year. So it's one of the reasons why all these teams here, most of these top teams are competing today as we hop on board with the young gun from Australia, Barco. Barcode, one of the most likable pros in the scene. You see that smile, and how can you not just want to cheer for a guy like Barcode? But I'll tell you what, as Charlotte, he was mad trash talking, that especially was a mischievous in the smile. open bracket. It might be slightly sinister. What are you hiding behind <laughs> yeah. that grin, Barcode? I was gonna say. <laughs> but uh, honestly, a player that you love to cheer for. He's got such a big personality and great gun skill that he's going to bring to the fight here in game number two as we head back to recharge. Recharge back in that rotation now, thankfully. So we have a little bit more maps to work with, and it's a McQuinn and Barcode working together in tandem, rotating across long haul. They might single out Soul Snipe. There's a player here at the trippy corner at the B box just below them as well, which is why Barcode maybe not full sending because here's that player lurking in the shadows. It was Manny. Manny singled out in the last game by Gilkey, now singled out between that trap pinch of Barcode and McQuinn. Native Red doing a great job to open up this match with that four kill. Now five kill spread, extending it to one full team wipe per possession that Native White needs. And just like in a CTF where it goes 1-0 on Aquarius, getting these team possession leads really forces the other team to play from behind to almost desperate a little bit like you would see in a CTF with minimal time left as this one's early, but Native Red are looking strong. A nice strong start here from Native Red as they have that five point lead. It's so interesting because it was the exact opposite in game number one where Native White were the ones with that initial lead and some nice map control. And now Native Red off of that comeback game one, it looks like they're holding on to that level of momentum. Soul Snipe does not connect on the shock rifle snipes. Doesn't quite live up to his name this time, but he's still holding on to attic position where he has great overview of the map. And now he can make that approach as camo is coming up, but he kind of gets caught trying to pick between two potential targets. He doesn't come out with either of them. That camo goes into the suit of Varco. Soul Snipe showing why the prioritization of opponents is so crucial here in intense high level 4v4 action as Barcode milking about 10 seconds of camo time here 10 out of the 30 seconds with no activity seeking intel instead as he finally spots one but has shots in the back barcode gonna have to stay alive with this camo to potentially bring native white back to a tie here they've done well though to bring it within two what was that what was the biggest spread here i know it was like five did it go five. past five five, five six was the, five okay okay so five point game now you're cutting it more in half like like more than more than halfway i don't know Two is, two is less than half of five is what I was going with. Yeah. It's a great little response here from Native White, and no surprise, but unfortunately, it looks like we have seven players currently in the lobby as Druk, uh, stuck in Canada, <laughs> is not allowed to be in the game right now. He got stuck in customs, and so unfortunately, we're going to have to <laughs> yeah. restart that game with what I think to be a two-point advantage. Yeah, Druk there in the, the digital realm of customs gets denied. <laughs> sent back and still <laughs> fortunately though magic he'll find his way back into this lobby whereas he was not able to find his way to hs charlotte and you got to imagine for the heart of a competitor like Druk, how devastating that was and i don't know maybe you could argue it's a positive because it allows him to uh almost like appreciate what you you, you missed out on and uh play a little bit harder here in these online open series as we see a little bit of that from native red switching gears here though 
to this space station versus rebellion matchup on the co coinciding side of the winners semifinals as it looks like rebellion has a little bit of a slay advantage but needs more on the objective efficiency if they want to come back in the stronghold yeah about a 75 point lead right now for space station and this is game one of the opposing series the other semifinals happening at the same time so big shout out to lvt for giving us a view double of both kill. as rain gets the double kill hopefully clearing a path for a teammate to potentially pick up those rockets but it's rebellion who come back with the slay stellar last alive for space station and really making the most of it with that rocket pickup one takedown and now we have the potential for a triple cap as both b and c are being swung over and potentially this was like a, a reset and they stopped at a certain score point not really sure what the storyline is there it looked very intentional on that end game screen yeah when mental just stood there i almost thought we had another disconnect but it looks like uh we will in fact go back to this native red versus native white series and when we last left this game previous to the reset it was close i believe yeah. two it was a plus two to three, red two, yeah two looks like a two kill advantage for native red we'll wait for the official ruling from face it admins but yeah we have been treated to quite the matchup here so far and you picked up on it magic just like we saw native white come out top come out on top in the early goings of game one it was a reversal in game two but then native white found the answer like native red did in game one so these two teams are a part of the same organization they probably have maybe some practice sessions or at least boot camps with each other you have to imagine the familiarity is at an all-time high between these two opponents this is almost something like beyond the rivalry right because it is like a it's like it's like a sibling battle almost at this point which like i grew up with with three siblings so i know that situation very well that rivalry from familiarity that you brought up something very interesting to see how the play styles like are distinguished from each other and also how do they counter another team that they know so well um native white in my mind like had like the biggest come up story as charlotte right you were the first one that i heard to predict them breaking into top four which they did but now that's the question at least in my mind is do they do they plateau do they taper off are they like the one hit wonder team or are they going to be consistently a top four team and matching up against a team like Native Red in the semifinals, no less, is a great test to see if they really are a team can go the distance and not just, you know, strike on luck. Yeah, I don't, I don't, to answer that, Magic, I don't think we have seen the last of Native White. And uh, when you look at the fact that they were improving every single one of those games and series at HCS Charlotte, it just goes to show the language barrier the travel barrier all the difficulties that came from mcwin grabbing australia's best in barcode and mexico's best in tapping buttons while very opportunistic led to some issues in the early goings uh, like i said the communication angle how, how, how can you expect to uh, be on the same page with your teammates if you don't even have the call outs determined in, in the english language so very difficult in the early goings for native white that's one of the reasons we saw and I'll just be honest, they were awful online. In those ACS <laughs> Open qualifiers, yep, yep. they played awful. And it just goes to show, a couple weeks later here, we're online again. This does not look even close to the same Native White that we saw previously online. So I believe, yes. I believe in this Native White roster. And it's ironic because I think for Native Red, the biggest challenge that they'll have into breaking top three and top four is their own teammates here in Native White. <laughs> I mean, it's a great thing for the native gaming org as a whole, right? To have two teams here fighting for top four potential. And maybe it's unfortunate that one gets dropped to the lower bracket where the story doesn't end there. But uh, I, I love what you said about Native White, how their earlier in the season online play was kind of underwhelming. They really showed up at Charlotte and now we're seeing another side, uh, that growth factor. And a big shout out to Mickwin for building this roster, literally pulling players from international regions into his team and seeing them stick together as a team of four throughout the early stages of HCS season two they're definitely a team that is fun to watch their storyline in fact both of these teams have quite diverse and unique stories where native red is a little bit more of a story of heartbreak from charlotte native white was quite triumphant and now they're back at square one the playing field is leveled they have all eight players ready to duke it out in the semifinals but while we wait for that match to get reset it does look like we're going back into that street stronghold space station versus rebellion on the other side of the semifinals rebellion here with a tough winner semifinals matchup in space station but hey if you want to break through you got to beat these top teams as we see mental go down Ray now pushing up trying to carry the mantle 
And he's got a help Carmea who's already going down on the A side. That noob, or excuse me, that, that grenade gonna take down Ryan Noob instead. Tough opening here for Rebellion, but they're doing a great job. Look at this, only down by a two to one margin. Have B and C for the time being, but just like that. Ooh, we might have a trip cap here for, for SSG. Oh, were you gonna say that noob was just taken down? That's, that's rough. Just because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he has noob in his name. Uh, this game is gonna continue onward as we look like we have all eight players back in the native v native matchup So that's gonna be our main focus here today. Although both semifinal series are exciting I know we got some SSG fans in the chat want to shout out Queen Stank who has been shouting their name SSG actually went undefeated through Sunday not dropping a single match, but can they do it here today? Rebellion's gonna be the first test for that SSG roster and we're gonna shift our attention back into this native red versus native white. Uh, I think the information was in chat for what the actual ruling was. Uh, our best assumption was a plus two for native yeah. red. Yeah, the plus two confirmed. So native red needing 48, native white needing 50 here. As native red are off to a similar start. We saw that last game, 3-0, 4-0, triple, triple kill for Druk. Native red looking good. Nighty don't miss on Observer and Druk don't miss on the early triple kill in just the opening stages. And Native Red said we might have that plus two to our name, but that's no way to be comfortable against a team like Native White. So currently sitting at a, a plus eight advantage. Manny has the camo. Native White trying to slow things down, but to no avail. Manny only needs one slim kind of angle to thread the needle on that shock rifle. He knows there's players on B stairs, but Barcode and Mick win again. Working as a duo, we saw this in long haul in the, the pre, before the reset. Barcode and Mickwin playing together has been really fun to watch. And for now, they survive long enough to back off Manny. The camo wears off. Still has ammo left in that shock rifle. Native White trying to slow down the pace here and crawl back in this one. But no, they're still down by that eight kill. Two Team White margin that we've seen really since the very beginning of both of these uh, games. One and two of the reset. Showing that Native Red, it's no fluke. This advantage they've built is one to be secured. Talik now pushing up down the long haul side. Has that repulsor sticky grenade combination and has tapping buttons over here on the glass side. Gonna try to help Gilkey out, but he is not in position to do that as we now hop back on board oh, with no. drug three going down for Native White. McWin, last one alive. All he's left to do is try to get them a favorable spawn here. I'm only going to disagree with the slightest. All four were down. Mickland was actually first off of the respawn. And it was Soul Snipe who got the double kill for the final two across the board. So Native White are left back on the respawn screen. And now they need to regroup in time for the camo that is spawning in. Again, it's an eight point difference in the game. If you put the plus two in there for Native Red, you're looking at a 10 point spread. But remember, it's Slayer. Slayer doesn't start until we hit 30. So there's time for Native White to build that comeback and maybe barcode with the use of the camo can be the catalyst for that comeback. Oh, barcode gonna give himself up, shooting the player down that gold pipe side because of it, gonna go down, as he's not gonna be able to maximize that camo in a one-for-one -one trade. That's not what you want there with the camo. And for Native White, they need every bit of what they can get from this Native Red roster, who looks much stronger after the reset, almost like the, the disconnect from Druk was just as disappointing as when he got denied at customs. Mm. And we're seeing that level of aggression through his play here as he sits at six and two. Yeah, absolutely right. The only one topping his satellite right now is Talik with the killing spree, spree with the perfect, finds the back of the helmet, but he didn't check his corner. He immediately looked left, maybe off of some other information. He forgot to check to the right-hand side, which is where Barcode was lurking in the shadows ready to take down the kill and to scoop back up that power weapon. Barcode, we talked about him with the camo with an opportunity to change fate. Now he has the shock Perfect. rifle in his hands and he's putting it to work, taking down Talik. That's a big one there because Talik is the highest performer so far in this lobby for Native Red. You want to make sure that he gets sent to the respawn screen as often as possible. And now it's a potential trap here at C. This plays into the favor, I believe. Oh, Barcode might've got a little collateral there, but I believe this positioning plays into the favor of Native White, but that kill on Needles really hurts them. That kill on Needles can be a painful one to take down as it looks like the map control now in the side of Native White. Here comes Gilkey just strolling through also casually into the control room. 
That's some nice team fire from Native White. More of that, and they are right back in this fight. They're trapping Tolik at the back of pipes. Gilkey flushes him out to the open. Tolik somehow, even on the escape, picks up a kill onto Mikwin, and he gets away. He's back to full health. He has the grapple. He's not shying away from this fight. He might have found a little bit too much damage. The plasma grenades combined with the gunfire is enough to finally take him down. Gilkey checking that weapon rack. He knows. The shock rifle going to be a big key. As I don't believe it's up just yet. Checks it once again. And now it's up. Grapple hook. Deadly catch. If you can land a headshot here on one of the unsuspecting members of Native Red. Unsuspecting was not the right word to use, though. Did you see those pre-fire shots on Bat Ledge? <laughs> the second Gilkey peeked the corner, he was taking damage. It just goes to show again the familiarity between these two teams. Yeah, and I think that's part of why you're seeing the slowdown, right? Because they know how their teams are going to position. Right now, Native Red not wanting to give up any open lanes to that shock rifle that Gilkey has. In game one, Gilkey was lasering with the stalker rifle, that red gun. And now he's doing more of the same, but this time of the electric variety with the shock rifle. He finds one. He doesn't commit to the shot in the second. Soul type almost baiting out gunfire or grenades by ducking through that line of sight that he knew Gilkey had his eyes on. Yeah, and I believe Gilkey landed the insta-splode timing as well. But it's got to connect for it to be called a wall. She is Gilkey. Connects on the shock rifle instead. Sends off the remote detonation to protect himself as he peeks once again through this A elevator door. Rotates now towards the side of Needles. And now this one, Magic, is a five-kill game. And we saw this for Native White. Their goal in Slayer is to stay within one possession, to stay within one team wipe. Because at the end of games, this Native White roster led by that oh wonderful oh. coach and Trey tries to see another wonderful perfect shot from Gilkey. But as long as they're able to keep it within four here going to the end game, Native White is right there in it. A big fan of Trey Tribe, formerly the coach of Oxygen, and now moving over to coach this native white roster. And a big key to their success. I don't think we shout out coaches enough, to be fair. And uh, they deserve credit as the important fifth man on the roster. Kills are going back and forth. Native White are three down currently, plus two. So five, they're just out of reach. And now with that kill from tapping buttons, they're within that one squad white potential. Mikwin on the oh. run, though. Mikwin stays alive long enough to draw the player out of cover. Ends up as a trade with the team fire. Oh, that was huge. Mikwin almost got away. That would have been, oh. He was simply distraction at that point when he elected just run away distraction on the map as he ultimately goes down and is now back on the map two down for native white only one for native red numbers advantage and that team wipe that possession game switching back to a two team wipe game as this is once again a five kill game five minutes on the clock and i wouldn't normally shout that out but this has been a little bit on the slower pace side as far as slay so it could come to play that the clock is an element to consider but right now it's native red who are the ones to worry about drug gets another kill that's 11 for him barcode wins a fight on the opposite side but it's just like the map is split half and half native white winning on one side native red winning on the other tapping buttons wins one as well if native white can collapse on these final two kills they're finally back within that one squad right white reach but it's soul snipe who's gonna deny that from happening disruptor pistol in play for barcode you see the damage over time ticking as his scope lights up you know that that player is continuing to receive damage and i love i love this from gilkey here lean uh, lean forward match up here with barcode because that combination of disruptor and battle rifle is the damage that you need to come back here in this game is it looks like barcode trying to get shoot off of there's a weapon there on the ground so it looks like barcode taking shots at that hoping that it lands and extends the reach out onto soul snipe has soul snipe found at the back of stairs but that's a huge cross shot gilkey though trading out with that camo oh this is going to be a huge possession here for native white if they want to come back it's going to come down to gilkey and this camo yeah, we're past that 30 point mark and climbing. Gilkey gets a little bit of initial damage onto a couple of targets, but Druck still manages to win out that fight onto Mikwin. He sees the shock rifle, he sees the player, goes for the back smack. He's gonna have to go for the double melee instead. The shock rifle, I believe, is out of ammo as you don't see it popping up on the ground and Gilkey is caught in a trap. The camo use was enough to get one kill, but as soon as it's burned out, Native Red worked quick on that collapse. Tapping buttons, looking to do his best to stay alive, but oh, it's Dalek. That's not the player you want to turn on and see with already a few shots into the back. And 
everybody for Native Red really playing their role this game, right? Nobody uh, having to overextend and do too much. And you might see Manny and think, oh, well, he only has six kills. He's minus four. No, 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 no. The assist and the damage there for Manny that we'll see in the post-game report will show why. He actually has a great game here so far, despite being negative. I love that. Always pointing back to the assist count and how many kills you are participating on in this team-based Slayer as Native Red now with an eight-point lead in this game, but they only have to hit 48. They're three kills away. Make it two. Tall can drop each, add a kill onto their board. Manny looking to add one as well. Maybe an assist comes through off of that grenade. It's Druck on the collapse. Tapping buttons is singled out. Druck making quick work of that slay set up by teammates. Native Red looking for one final kill. Is it going to be Druck? Back of Attic versus Gilkey. Gilkey opens up with some damage. It's not enough. Gilkey jumps out of the way of the melee, but the final kill does go through. Native Red take the win. 50 to 39 is going to be the end score line off of that plus two before the reset. All right, here we go. Switching gears here into the game two Slayer. SSG up 1-0 over Rebellion. But down five here in this game, Magic. Rebellion with a chance to tie the series. Well, Rebellion's not backing away from a fight. They win the distance against Sentinels, winning in a game of five off of what was one of my favorite series maybe ever to cast. A lot of fun on that one, but there's no time oh, yeah. for Rebellion to revel in that victory because Space Station Gaming have so far throughout this tournament been undefeated. They have not lost a single map. A rebellion's the first one to break through that perfect. You know, if you're playing old school spades on your computer and the hearts get broken to make that shatter effect, that's what's gonna happen. The <laughs> space station dropping map here to rebellion. Yeah, take a look at mental here. 2.0 KD, 15 and 7. He, Huge. They say he's a Gears of War player, but with a performance like this, he's a Halo kid at this point. As he's pushing forward with the captain, Ryan Noob. Oh, that damage. Chilling no spree. hope for Bound. The rookie of the year is... He made it look, he made it look easy there. That kill did not look uh, very difficult to secure for Rebellion. And when I see kills going easily, that goes to show that maybe there's something to this Rebellion roster that could potentially upset Space Station. 10-point lead looking great for Rebellion as they hit that home stretch, that final quarter bound. Great maneuvering with the camo, but as soon as he fires the first burst, did you see how Rebellion team fire was there like a half a second later as yep. soon as Bound revealed his position? Yeah. yeah, it looks like Rebellion are on it right now. They're shooting yeah. the same thing. They're listening to the same thing. And while their grouping isn't quite all aligned, it's really all over the place. The teamwork is not 48-35. This is a full dismantling of an SSG roster that, like you said, Magic has not lost yet in this tournament. Looks like they're about to take their first one, though, right here. I'm not going to try to beat a dead horse here, but Rebellion have more than like 50% more assists right now than Space Station. When I last checked, it was like 20 to like 32 around there. And Rebellion's team fire, something we saw in their victory over Sentinels. Wow. And now we see is that... That's my best chatter effect sound I can do as that comes through as they take a map, the first map in this tournament that Space Station loots. Yeah, Rebellion. I, mm, I'm i so intrigued by this Rebellion roster and the likes of uh, Rain and Ryanub, the former members and the veterans of E United, taking on the Young Gun and Carmea, the unproven Young Gun, really, for, for all intents and purposes, up until that Charlotte land where he placed top six earning himself his first ever top six on land and then you got mental as well who he's got plenty of major championships he's been on the main stage plenty of times but in gears of war instead of halo starting to see it all come together though for rebellion that's a team that we're going to keep an eye on as we switch gears again back into this native red versus native white series and we got a long haul we got a game three oddball a great swing game if you're native white honestly milk a lot of time off this match you get a 15 20 minute game here you take the dub you yeah. start to you know chip away at the likes of native red and maybe with that they could come back oddball life fire was my initial like favorite map and mode combo it might still be i think i'm still feeling it out for season three with the bandit with the shroud screen obviously both live fire and streets in particular play a little bit differently because of those season three changes and it's something i'm going to be looking for in this match because 
if there's these two teams, right? Native Red, Native White, both coming together. They both have the same hand dealt to them as far as here's season three, make adjustments to a new weapon, make adjustments to a new piece of equipment. And watching the pros utilize anything new is one of my favorite things about following along with the whole like HCS as a whole. How are they gonna use that shroud screen? But I think there's so much a creative play that that equipment in particular allows for. Yeah, no, it's a great point, Magic. We've seen the Shroud screen come into play on the likes of King of the Hill, Strongholds, maybe a little bit of CTF, but I feel like the, the ruling is still out on Oddball and how to utilize that new equipment here. As we know on Live Fire, Shrouding the Overshield is a popular strategy, but when does the LVT come into play? When do we see the LVT brand? And I'm calling it that because in the show <laughs> match at HCS, now we know, yeah, at HCS Charlotte, we saw Brandon and oh, LVT Brandon and Oath using the shroud screens to push forward with the oddball to make those rotations. And that's really where I think that shroud screen could come into play here on oddball to connect between a fulcrum in the rotation, covering up that lane where you'd normally take damage or even go down. Now the shroud screen can protect you from it. Excited to see how these two teams deploy that strategy. Gotta find you a duo that uses fulcrum in a sentence and it makes sense. Shout out to Mikowski. I'm always picking up some vocabulary lessons. I need to have a whole sheet of Mikowski <laughs> vocabulary at the ready. But I love the play of that shroud screen, calling it the LVT full respect as Brandon was on that show match at Charlotte, one of the first people to be able to get their hands on the bandit, on the shroud screen, even checking out some new maps, but more relevant to this making the use of that shroud screen in order to set up a rotation. And especially when it's combined with team coordination, the shroud screen is one of the most team-based pieces of equipment that we have. I guess drop wall is probably somewhat in that category, but shroud screen even more, you can cover your full team in one shroud. Yeah, gonna be so crucial to see how that gets deployed here as well. Wow, talk, speaking of deploy, that oddball gets deployed out of that reset spot immediately by Native White, but no, 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 that's bait. You can take the oddball, but we're gonna take the team wipe and snipe tower control, says Native Red. Oh, we'll see the shaking of the finger back and forth. No, 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 that's bait. You can't take that one for free. Here's the shroud screen, more of that traditional sense used to pick up the overshield, but I don't know if that overshield was a blessing or a curse as the focus fire comes through. Overshield is quickly eliminated. Tallick with the melee takedown and the use of that objective doesn't play the ball off the side of the map that you would expect because Drunk is here to clean up the final kill. They're trying to keep this ball in play. And this is one of the big differences you'll see in oddballs is teams electing for early milk, but it usually doesn't work out to where both get that effective 30. Here we have native red rounding it up to about 30 and native white with only three in a moment where they went three down. So trading three seconds for three deaths, not the trade you want to make, not the win condition you want to secure here if you're native white. Druck has to fall back now, waiting for teammates off the respawn. Expends the rest of that sniper, so no power weapons in play currently. We might keep an eye out for the heat wave, kind of a secondary power weapon, but keep an eye out for barcode as well. At the back of B, holding down basically half of the map single-handedly. Gets one kill, gets an assist, and ready to eliminate those spikes. He did a little bit of remote detonation damage, maybe a half a second too early. Otherwise, he would have got that full kill on Soul Sniper. Oh, great answer back here from Native White as we're now just about tied in slays and overall scores. But just as I say that, Native Red regain control, rotate it back to A at a time where it looked like Native White may have had that instead. And oh, this is crucial. I saw Overshield up in five. I believe it's already up. And did Druck just sneak away with it for free? That could be devastating. Yes, and he's yeah, waiting yeah, for the delayed pop. Full efficiency here from Druck as he lets his shields get all the way down to zero and then back up to 200%. Guilty gonna have to find a way to deal with that. Tries to land the sticky trades, but Druck, as a result of the efficient play with Overshield, still has plenty to work with. Yeah, plenty of Overshield. Almost a surprising amount. He sidesteps a couple of plasmas and the delayed activation means that Druck is really like, you know, the, the bully on the playground right now he's dealing out damage Reversal. left and right he Carrier takes kill. down the heat wave player and uh multiple slays in his hands as native red now with a 40 point lead primarily off of drug and that overshield usage tabby buttons finds the answer in fact tabby buttons first slay of the game was a crucial one native white need to get right back in this round yeah three going down for native red at a crucial time that'll be all four okay native white at an opportune time with that sniper rifle up as well. Tapping buttons. 
Looking to tap the face of a few of his org mates, but he goes down. Only two shots wasted to that sniper rifle. So now Druck has plenty to work with, but no, he goes down as well. That sniper precariously sitting at sea, and with the oddball over here at Pillar's Magic, I wonder how much focus is going to be on picking back up that sniper, as it looks like everybody is focused on the oddball. The objective is so tempting to keep your focus on, but there's so much utility, including Druck, showing us that the sniper was worth going after. And right now, that's the control that Native Red have. They have all of the utilities on the map and the oddball. They don't have to pick between one or the other. They said, why not both? And wow, McWin there. I thought he had full coverage from the dummy. But they found a way to shoot around it. Tapping buttons, finding a way to re-secure the sniper rifle for Native White. But he's only got two shots to work with. Two seconds left to let Overshield comes up. Huge body shot there as Barcode cleans it up. McWin comes in and trades out. Numbers advantage for Native White. But they have to keep Soul Snipe... Or they have to keep <laughs> tapping buttons alive. Soul Snipe goes down and this Overshield looking more likely. But all the while, everybody's worried about Overshield on the other side. Native oh, no. White are about to steal this round. They didn't even have to get overshield. All they had to do was get a hundred seconds. And here's the overshield player. Too wow. little, too late for native white. And you know, you wanted to credit Tappy Buttons for a nice live there on dummies, using that dummy to block shots and the assist comes through, but it's all about the timing of it. Going after that overshield was a death sentence for native white. Yeah, it's been the sound strategy. You gotta give Gam, the coach for Native Red, credit because in the early goings, Native White elected for three seconds of milk, but then went all down. And then here at the end, they elected to play for Overshield when really it was the time and control of that oddball over at green. That should have been the main priority as that juxtaposition of dueling strategies here and dueling coaches comes out on full display. Overshield pick up now in the hands of Mickwin. Pair it with eight rounds of high deadly damage, high caliber damage in the form of that sniper rifle. Looking for a pick. He's going to take one. I think that reset did come through as Manny was kind of just taunting over the edge of the map with a double kill. Checking the back of green, making sure there's no players lurking on all four go down for Native Red. This is where Native White, no hesitation, are picking up the oddball, leaving Mickwin here with half of the overshield remaining and sniper ammo to try to look for those respawns but it looks like he gets wrong the spawns are coming in at a side mickwin gets to the fight but he gets there too late he's gonna find one double two three G. he finds a beautiful snipe shot for the double and that's opening up opportunity now for native white to nearly get a team wipe of their own but well, look at this it's been four down three down for native red but six to 36 on the scoreboard and again just like we saw in round one it's that effective 30 seconds of milk which allows native red to take a deep breath start to play it at, at their pace they don't have to rush or overextend for anything here as we see gilkey with that sniper rifle they're gonna look to take him down and pick up that oddball instead perfect process but no three down again for native red how does manny play this as the last player alive he goes down so it's back to back to back sequences where native white has numbers advantage can they find the oddball time as well they're trying to play for that overshield. You see the shroud screen back in play. The objective now rotating over to tower side. And here comes Paul, like cutting off that rotation. A big trade. Mickwin's last alive. Marco, sorry, here as well at the back of elbow. Now Mickwin is last alive. Had the overshield. Overshield is spent. He has to play some defense here because he's outnumbered. He sees the rotation. He sees the respawns coming through and trying to get the oddball back to where teammates are spawning up. Ah, oh, heads up veteran play there from McWin. Almost like a Halo 2 player from Carbon on lockout, rotating that oddball to the advantageous side for Native White. But the push is on on the garage door for Native Red. And all oh, three go down. McWin, last player alive, looking to work that oddball out to top mid. But not only does he get it out to top mid, he takes down an opponent as well. That is an absolute huge trade win condition there for McWin. Doing a great job. Last alive with the oddball. Yeah, and even Manny was still low on health, trying to re-engage in that fight, but Native White off of the respawns are winning slay after slay. The fight's gonna go down at Sandbags. There's two players there. Tall looking on the other side of the map, might use this heat wave as a bit of a sniper as he tries to thread the needle to not uh, mistakenly take down teammate Druck. But it is in the hands of Native Red, the oddball, the heat wave, the sniper, they really have it all. And don't discount Druck with one repulsor to his name. 
on Sunday. Native Red win 3-0 in Oddball. They're looking to make this series 3-0 as they hit that halfway point in round two. Oh, and this looked like a splitting image of round one where it looked like both teams were pretty close around the 30 mark, but now Native no, Red no. once again running away with it here as Druk heats up with the sniper rifle. Now picks up the oddball as well. It's that objective efficiency that we're talking about. Just because you've got a power weapon in your hand doesn't mean you can't grab the oddball as well. 62 seconds and climbing. Druk rotating over to the back ledge here just in case he needs to play it or he might even do a rotation to back of green. Ooh, early. He's going to opt to toss the ball a little bit earlier than I would have anticipated, but he's looking at the numbers. He's looking at the timing. Mick went off of the reset. Native White, this is their chance. Almost given to them for free. They didn't have to fully break that hold to force a reset. All right, here we go. An opportunity, but no, the numbers advantage is in favor of Native Red, but the Overshield in favor of Native White, tapping buttons, putting it to good use there, Learn, earning himself the double kill, oddball control as well. And just like we saw Mick win earlier, it's tapping buttons with that heady rotation over to the sandback side. And really curious whether they rotate it here to the back of A where you can't play oddball or rotate it towards B, but they're gonna have to earn B as it looks like Native Red has that in control. Now they're pushing through to A. Okay, Native Red look like they're not even going to give Native White even a potential reset. In fact, they're going to steal that hold. They're going to say, thank you for the defensive setup. We'll take hold of that. And Druk takes hold of the oddball. He actually has the least amount of objective time, which is surprising. Usually he averages between 60 and 80 seconds, but I think it has to do with last game. Game number two, Druk was the main slayer for Native Red. So when a player is heating up, in, in basketball, they would call it feeding the hot hand. If you're getting the slays, let him get the slays. And only now is he been getting a good chunk of time on the objective. But Native Red go four down. Native White break the hold. The fumble at the 98 second mark. Pressure onto Native White, not only in the series, but in this game, they need to play perfect to stop Native Red from getting those final two seconds on the auto. All right, starting to see a little bit of milk for Native White, but they have to play near flawless, perfect Halo if they want to stop Native Red from earning those two seconds. Numbers heavily favoring Native Red here. Three down for Native White. Tapping buttons, the final hope. But that Shroud screen helps him out as well, but that trade is actually going to hurt as Native Red sneaks into the Shroud screen, grabs that oddball, and the series win here. 3-0.